So we've got attendees coming in. Why can we not see anyone? I don't know. Not sure. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, everyone. We're just trying to Hello. figure out how to, to, to get you guys up on screen. For some reason, we're not seeing you. Hmm. That's weird. We need some kind of music going, is what we need. That's what we need. That's the next one. Keenan, you should sing <laughs> while we're waiting everyone coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for entering the lobby. Um, if everybody hasn't checked it out, um, we've all got, oh no, my cat's gone. Well, I think something crashed. If you guys want to go look up Snap Camera, um, it's super cool for, oh, there he is. It's really, really cool for um, for working from home, just meeting with people, a little bit of humor uh, when we need it. Um, just kind of fun to use. Um, so right, can, me, can everyone see us? Um, we seem to have everyone's video turned off. If anyone is better at Zoom and using Zoom than me, if they know how to get everyone's video turned off, if they can pop something in the comments. Uh, I will unmute everyone. So if anyone's got an idea. Cool. Uh, somebody said they have their video turned off. Can you guys see Andrew? And can you see me? Keenan, me? Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Amy. We appreciate you letting us know. Cool. Awesome. All right. Um, what do you think, Andrew? You want to? Should we get started, or should we cool. wait a minute? We could wait just a couple of minutes, I think, just to see. We had, I think we had seventy-five registrations, so they seem to still be oh, coming okay. in. Right. If you guys are okay with that. Hi, Jeremy. Good to see you. You guys should be able to talk at the moment. Hey guys, hey Kirsty, hey Jeremy. Hey Mark, hey Andrew hey, Curry. Hey. And I'll turn my cat off in a minute, just. <laughs> a little, it's a little bit distracting maybe. A uh -uh. little, little bit, just, just a little bit, a little bit. Hi Robin. Right. For anyone that's looking for how to get these fabulous cats, I've dropped the link in the chat slightly further up, so you'll be able to find it. Yeah, um, it's called Snap if Camera. You, if you, thanks. you get all different sorts of ones, which is very cool. But we chose the cats because they look really comfy. Okay. Hello, Shannon from Australia. You, wow. You can also be a pickle. So that brings a, a smile to anyone. <laughs> One of my favourites. <laughs> you can also turn it off as well. So <laughs> yes, let's all turn it off. Seems cool. Like so there's like 50 it. people in. I'm conscious of everyone's time, so uh, I'll maybe get started and turn that camera off completely. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, it's obviously a pretty challenging time for us all right now. So I want to thank you for taking your time out of the day to, to spend some time to join with us. I'm Andrew, I'm the founder of Made Brave. Um, and we, today with us, we also have Keenan, who has now turned yellow. His camera has gone completely yellow. He'll all be right. back in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Keenan is our brand manager at Made Brave. So both myself and Keenan have got some, some thoughts to share with you, hopefully some practical advice, help and tips um, for some of the challenges you're facing. We also have uh, lovely Barbara here as well. Um, Barbara is our office manager and um, my PA at um, Made Brave and she helps organizing everything. And she's gonna su support today. You'll see down the bottom, we have a and a facility. So as we're talking along today, if you if you if anything comes to your head or you have any particular challenges that you're facing right now that you you maybe hope that we might be able to give some guidance on or help pop them in the q a you can 
you can upvote different people's questions. So if you guys all jump in there and sort of start to sort of prioritize what you want to hear from us at the end of the session, we'll be able to do that. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, you know, as I mentioned, it's, it's a pretty challenging time for, for us all just now, uh, myself included, you know, we, we, we've got um, quite a large business and, and the, the challenges of clients stopping projects and work being put on hold and just some clients just not spending uh, at all now is, is, is you know, pretty um, uncertain times. But I think, you know, the, the one thing that unites us all and, you know, part of the fact why we're all here is that, you know, we're all going through something quite similar at the moment. Although it'll be on different scales for everyone and, you know, and I think we're all going through the different stages of the, the realization. I know myself, I kind of, first of all, I went through a bit of denial and then I went through in real panic and then fear and, um, you know, I, I was quite upset for a few days and I kind of look back on my LinkedIn and go like, I don't even remember posting stuff. Like, I think I almost feel like I blacked out for a few days. Um, but, you know, you know, I, I, I suppose, you know, I, I've turned a corner and trying to, we're trying to do anything positive we can to kind of help those around us. And um, I, I believe that truly we can all get through this um, working together. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to a lot of business owners, a lot of freelancers, a lot of clients of ours at Made Brave over the last few days to try and wrap my head around what's happening in the marketplace, how people are responding, also trying to understand what best practice looks like at the moment and the hope that we can share some of that insight with you. Uh, you know, a lot of you, I'm sure, will have had work stopped overnight um, or potentially your business model has been flipped upside down or, 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 or now doesn't function at all. And perhaps maybe a lot of your business is face to face or, or, or you're lying getting new business by being out face to face. And of course, this is all a, a real worry, um, you know, and there'll be a lot of you guys as well that, you know, maybe aren't social media or digital marketing natives or, or totally comfortable in social media. And I think we're all being forced out of our comfort zones um, to, to find a voice online. I know myself is that, you know, I'm, I'm not hugely used to talking to, to camera um, on like webinars and I've done a bit of public speaking, but this is like kind of new for me and I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone to do this. And it can feel pretty daunting, right? Um, so we wanted to try and pull this session together to share some of maybe some of our tips, some of the help that we have. Um, a lot of what we've been telling business owners is uh, it's now a great time to kind of potentially refocus on on your brand um, you know we're almost forced into a situation where, 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 where we often can't do sales um, and you know often you know Richard Branson talks about brand as being the brand is, the, is your reputation um, Marty Newmeyer who was on one of our Just a Chat With podcasts recently. He's, uh, he's a real brand expert and he kind of talks about brand as a person's gut feeling about your business. And often we talk about it at Made Brave as a brand is something that connects people with your business, um, you know, kind of in the way that you would a friend in terms of, you know, it's, it's, it's figuring out how to connect your business to people. Um, now, you know, um, the, the thing about, um, you know, um, having to work on a brand just now is that, you know, often we've, we've got a bit of extra time or some of us have got quite a lot of extra time and, you know, potentially in your teams, you've got people with time. And so it, it's potentially a good time to start working on this stuff. And, you know, I, I was kind of thinking, you know, the way you need to think about this right now for your business or your, your, your brand is if in three, three years time or five years time, you're looking back at this moment you know, what, what is someone's gut feeling or what is their, what, what, what is their thought on your reputation going to be? Um, you know, what are they going to think and say about how you acted, how you behaved? Uh, and, and it's hard, right? Because we're, in the moment, we're, we're thinking about now and, and we're off, a lot of us are in fight or flight mode and, and survival mode. And it's hard, but, you know, it's almost trying to find and put ourselves one, of, one part of our mind into the future and one part uh, looking at now. We often tell our clients that when it comes to marketing, you should focus 60% of your effort on building your brand and then 40% of your effort on activating your brand. So using all that goodwill that you've created to activate it to, to either bring sales or, or, or whatever you need for your business. Um, at the moment, that's not an option really because a lot of us can't can't do sales or, or well, um, or or, ha or having to find new ways to innovate. So you know, a lot of people just now um, is trying to use this time to kind of go full in, 100% on your brand, or 90% or 80%. Um, now, 
branding means a lot of different things to, to everyone. And I'm sure everyone on this uh, call have a sort of different um, understanding of brand. And, and that, that, that's, that's the world we live in today. We, the, word, the word is used everywhere and anywhere. Um, but like, you know, for me, brand is not our logo. It's not our identity. That's a, a small part of our brand. And we often use the analogy of a brand is like a person. And a person has more than just the, the, the physical identity to them. They have a personality. They have tone of voice. They, um, you know, and some of the really important things that, that we live by at Made Brave is that, you know, brand branding, real great brands are built on strong purpose. Um, they're built on great values and the you know and you know taking people on a journey with a brand you have to have a, a really set vision now you know purpose uh, purpose is the reason beyond making money now i understand and i'm I, you know i very well understand that you know we, we need money to pay for our teams to pay for our businesses and to keep things alive and to pay for our livelihoods and, and, and our life at home but if we put that aside for a second and we think about purpose um, you know, as I say, it's the reason we, we get out of bed um, and do what we do. Um, so, like, um, you know, at, at the moment, um, kind of purpose, a lot of people are either are figuring out, you know, what their purpose are, purpose is, sorry, or, or kind of perhaps potentially reinventing it. And I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, as we progress in life, uh, sometimes we change and, you know, we, we can, we can suddenly your, your purpose can be brought alive in, inside you um, and, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about that in, in a minute um, um, you know most of you will kind of have uh, um, you know values that you've created in your business and you know um, you know values are generally used as to, to kind of show what, what you believe in um, and behaviors that you want people around you to, to use or, or, or work with in your business and we often use them in branding to attract the right type of people you know because Generally, in a business, you don't want you don't want every customer in the world. It's never going to work. It's never going to happen. You want people that align with your values. You want people to join your tribe and be with you um, and, and align with you as well. So, you know, as I say, I've seen a lot of people finding their purpose at the moment or changing it. Um, if you've not um, read this book, there's a great book, Simon Sinek, starts with why. Um, also, Simon is really active on LinkedIn at the moment, and um, if, if you look at some of his content, he's really good at kind of help understanding what that what your purpose is and what your why is. Um, but like you know, I wanted to kind of talk through some of the things that potentially you can do. So a lot of these things are maybe not going to be immediate money makers, but my hope is maybe they spark an idea in you, maybe they inspire you, and maybe they, they might turn into something that you can you, you can do in your business right now. Some of them are a little bit longer term, but as I say, we need to have one eye on the future as well as as, as the current time as well. So, um, you know. Um, you know, uh, you know, what we're seeing just now is a lot of um, advertisers are actually turning their ads off at the moment. And, you know, when, when you start to see that and wonder why that is happening is that, um, you know, I, I think it's a good time to go and readdress what ads you have running. Um, some people have, you know, maybe been too busy, too um, hung up on things, but, but go and check what ads you've got running. Go and check the wording on Google ads, on any Facebook ads or LinkedIn or anything you've got um, in, in paid media. Um, it's a good time to kind of check, does the tone of voice fit for the world right now? Because when you created the strategy for those ads or, or, or that copy, the world wasn't in the same place. And, and the world, as we all know, has changed overnight. Um, we're seeing brands like Coca-Cola. They just announced yesterday that they're turning off all business as um, you know, business as normal advertising, um, and you know, and and I think the challenge we all have right now is that it's a very sensitive time um, in terms of treading the line between we need to keep the doors open of our business, we need to keep talking to people, but you know, you've really got to watch that balance of, you know, not looking like you're profiteering um, off anything. And, and, and it's going to get more challenging for us all over the coming weeks, um, you know, as we, you know, we experience our friends, our families, or our loved ones getting unwell, um, you know, it's going to get a little bit harder. And, and you know, I, I don't know what that's going to look like. And, um, but, but, you know, um, in terms of like thinking about how we can do things for your brand right now, and, and, and to be thinking over planning over this, um is that um you know um sorry that, that, that you know that there's some actions that we can take just now um and you've got to be a little bit patient to see you know the results coming back for those so first first and foremost is is don't just go out online just now saying this is what i sell i need people to buy more of this stuff right selling right now is, is really probably not a good a good thing to do and if you imagine everyone 
you know, there's so many people without a job, without work, and they're all trying to sell. So, you know, that becomes the kind of almost nothingness on, on, on social media. And what you have to do is try and listen to your customers. So the first thing to do is listen. Um, so rather than put ads out, listen to them first. Um, as, as an example, you know, we recently launched a support group for the creative industries here on LinkedIn. And, but before I did that, I, I had the idea and kind of knew I wanted to do something that had a sort of bigger purpose and, and help towards the community. But before spending the time, the effort and the resource to do that, I literally put a LinkedIn post out and said, look, I'm thinking about doing this. Would anyone think that would be useful? And which platform would you like to see it on? And you know the the uh, response was overwhelming, um, but it, 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 it told me which platform everyone wanted it on, and it told me that there was a need. So you know we set that up. So think about before you just change your service offering. Check check with your customers. Check with your followers. Hey guys, we've just lost all this part of our business, and we're about to do this. Do you guys actually need that? Does that sound useful to you? Would you buy that service? Rather than going spending two or three weeks time with five or six people and you, and you don't see that return. Um, uh, you know, also it's a good time to set up social listening for your brand. So if you don't know what that is, basically there's lots of tools and platforms out there. Some of them are free, some of them are paid for, um, but you should be starting to listen to what, what are your customers or your consumers saying about your brand? What are they saying about your competitors? What are they saying about the market in general? Or what are they saying about your industry? Uh, and if you can get as much insight as possible, there's so much noise out there and it's hard. And, you know, I think, you know, I struggle a bit just now, you know, every time I seem to go online, you know, you can almost feel like in a dark place. So if you could almost filter stuff that is useful to you, um, so that you can try and make informed decision based on insight rather than just what potentially your gut is, is telling you. So, so, you know, listen first and uh, listen to what your consumers are, are saying and then respond. So ask them what they need before selling them something. Um, we need to be sensitive. We need to be empathetic to people. You know, we've got to remember that, you know, you just don't know what, what story the person you're talking to on LinkedIn is having. So, you know, you know, be kind to people and kind of, um, you know, be conscious of when, you know, when someone's reaching out to you or when you're talking to someone, you know, what's the right thing to do here, right? Remember, everyone has got some sort of battle or challenge right now and it's, and it's difficult. And as I mentioned before, we're all in fight or flight mode. Um, so, you know, be sensitive with the content that you put out and the wording of that. And if you've got people that you can sense check, get people to sense check that content, you know, because, you know, as I said, I, you know, I, I put posts out, you know, and, and then, you know, I can't even remember putting them out. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes it's good to get a secondary opinion on something. And often that's how Keenan and I work together is that, you know, I'll come up with a piece of copy or vice versa, and then we'll, we'll check it off each other just to make sure that we've not, um, we've not, uh, not thought about something. Um, so, um, and remember what I said before, check all your existing ads, turn off this, what doesn't feel right just now. Um, and we can always turn things back on as we get more confidence or, or, or as we see things to start coming back. Um, now, what you could also do is like, is there something in your business? Is there a skill set? Is there a resource that you can, that you can do that or use that will actually help people? Uh, a big part of what I'm kind of, you know, I suppose saying to brands at the moment is like, can you be part of the solution rather than trying to sell people things or, you know, just, or just creating more panic and noise? Can you do things that will actually help people? Um, you know, I spoke to a business last night who, you know, have a printing company and obviously all their team have been sent into lockdown and the owner was, you know, there, you know, in the middle of the night sitting in his uh, office um, or, the, you know, the printers and he was on the phone to me, you know, and he's, he, you know, he's, trying to figure out can he can he actually make masks you know with all the the vinyl material and, and such like he's got and can he do something useful because the machines aren't getting used they've got all this material and obviously they'll not make sales just now but if he can do something that has an impact positively in the future months or in the future you know someone someone's going to have understood that goodwill that they're going to you know it's, it's going to come back to them um now an important thing um, is going to be transparent and communicate openly. Um, don't be afraid to tell people what's happening in your business. And I, I know that's easier said than done. Um, you know, people trust people that are honest. And we've all been in meetings before where someone pretends to know everything, and and you're kind of looking at them and saying they don't actually know that. They just made up an answer. And you know, 
it's, it's, I always feel that if you don't know the answer, you know, tell people, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to go and try and figure it out or, or I'm, I'm trying to figure it out at the moment. And so like, don't be afraid to go on social media and to say, look, we just lost all of this business. I don't know what the answer here is to, to fix it. You know, we've got some things we're working on and tell people what you're trying to work. What you'll find is, or what I find is that most human beings actually really want to help each other. Um, it gives them purpose, you know, people, and there's a lot of people with time on their hands just now that want, that will want to help you. So don't be afraid. And I know that's sort of, it is an easier thing to say. It's hard to put that, you know, to be vulnerable in, pur in, in public, but I would encourage you if you can do it, you know, pop a question out and, 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 and ask for help and, and, and you'll find that a lot of people will come back to you. Um, but also like, you know, um, be transparent with, you know, how you're approaching this as a business. Um, you know, you know, when we talked about branding earlier on, we talked about purpose and values and, and these things. And this is a, a, a big time to kind of show what you what, what you're made of, what your team's made of, and, and, and especially how you look after your team and people. Um, there's a lot of brands just now are, you know, who have, are getting, you know, kind of slated online and they're, they're, they're getting a lot of damage and, um, you know, it, you know, people people see through just that identity, and they and they, they want to see right into a business right now. So, so more importantly than ever, it's kind of how can you look after your team? I always believe that if you look after your team, you look after people. Well, they look after the brand and they look after the company, and then hopefully as well, if you if you're leading a business, well, if you look after your people, they're going to look after you, uh, and that's always my hope. So, um, so remember, don't just think about that front side of what your brand looks and feels like. It really starts. We always say it starts from the inside out so you know it all starts from how, how you nurture and look after your people um, uh, adapt your strategy so like you know we spoke earlier that, you know if you've created a strategy in the last six months you maybe you maybe had a full away day with your whole team and there was 20 people there and, and you created the strategy and you feel like well we've invested all that time and money we better keep that strategy going the world literally changed you know and it's changed a couple of weeks ago and you know keenan and myself you know we made brave we just launched a new studio and that we now don't get to enjoy um and you know we 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 built uh we'd launched a new website we would soft launched it in the background and just now we're meant to be talking about our new website and how great it is and you know where all our you can go and see all our work however that we've put that to the side because we can't continue with what we thought the strategy was the strategy is going to change daily and you need to reevaluate it hourly daily and you know every single day so i'm waking up every day and me and keenan are catching up and saying look what's happened in the world how does that affect what we were thinking yesterday and and what's it going to affect for tomorrow as well so, so don't be be afraid to kind of move that stuff you can always jump back to that 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 work that you did before but you know um you know try and reevaluate just now um, I, I mentioned it earlier, but it's a really important one is like activate your purpose. If you said, you know, Made Brave's um, purpose was to inspire creativity in everyone. That's what we collectively crowdsourced as a team and realized that kind of, that gets us out of our bed in the morning when we see someone's idea turn into something great or we inspire change in someone. So, you know, for just for me just now, it really, I feel like it's really a light in my, in my belly. And, I, you, know, I, you know, I'm now getting out of bed going, like, I know what I need to do. This is my job to do that. Um, so, like, so, so dig out that PDF, those brand guidelines that you did at one point and figure out what that purpose was. Or, or if you don't have it, don't worry. You know, we can figure it out. Just, you know, figure out the thing that makes you feel alive, the thing that you can bring to the world that's going to benefit everyone beyond money, you know, so, and sort of, and, and work your marketing strategy off that. So what is that purpose? And everything is built back to that. If it doesn't do that, we don't do it. If it does, we do it. Uh, and, and it can't be money, right? Your purpose can't be to make money. That's, that's a given. We all need to do that. And we know that it's something beyond making money. Uh, if you say that you believe in things as a business, this is time to prove it. And this is time to show people that your values are actually things that you believe. So, um, you know, what can you do to help people if you, you know, potentially if you have developers or designers, uh, you know, can, can you build a platform to help vulnerable people that make their needs known? Um, you know, I spoke to a joiner friend of mine the other day and, you know, he was a bit worried, no work and, and nothing. And I, and I said, what do you have? And, you know, we realized they had loads of timber and I said, well, everyone's going to work from home. Could you make desks for everyone? Um, you know, like what tools, what, what things do you have in your business that just lie there that you don't think of that you maybe get a cost price or, you know, is, or is easy for you to do? And how can you, how can you create something with them that, 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 um, 
we'll, we'll share them. Um, I saw Jeremy is on the call from Power of Life and I saw he did a great thing the other day. Jeremy has a power bank business so they, they make batteries that help all your devices when you're when you're out and about and you know uh you know jeremy took what, what stock he had left um, and instead of trying to take make money from that stock and trying to sell them because you know no one's going to buy right now jeremy gave all the stock to the nhs workers that need them so you know in return what, what's going to come back for jeremy he's now got a great story to tell he's got something a story to tell that's not selling he's actively doing something that's good for the nhs which you know these guys are out in the front line and they're they're the ones looking after us all and you know so 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 jeremy will have to kind of buckle down and and, and potentially not have sales just now he's, he's potentially can't even get um stock because you know all his stock comes in from china um but I believe that in a couple of months, Jeremy it will have a much stronger sales pipeline. He'll have more opportunity because there'll be a lot of people that, that feel goodwill towards his brand. Um, you know, so do you have social media people in your business? Could they create a group for, um, you know, people in your industry? Could you pull people together? Could you support them? Um, you know, I, I'm big at the moment and thinking like, you know, we, we don't want to push our competitors down and, and, and maybe there's some kind of innovative ways that you could start working with your competitors. Is there people that before you've never spoke to that you could reach out to and you could, you could try and work together with? Um, you, you know, you might get something great out of this. Um, also, you know, do you have a hotel and there's now no guests in your hotel, but your hotel is in the country? Could you could you be filming some content out in the country and kind of sharing that with people when they're all in their house and they want to see a bit of nature? Um, it's also important at the moment to humanise your brand and um, you know if you know if you've not let the people behind the brand be any sort of face of it, bring them into it. That will help bring have your team have purpose. Um, also, we need to see smiling faces. You know, we, we had the cats on at the, the, the earlier here, and you know, it's important to try and keep people smiling and 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 having a bit of fun as well. Because when if we're constantly in anxiety and you know fight fight or flight, then you know it's going to make things harder. So we got to, we got to make sure we're, we're creating um, fun as well. So don't be don't be scared to create share positivity. Um, and uh, you know, we're all in our houses now. So uh, you know, is there is there a way that you can create unique content that no one else has thought about is there a, is there a better way is there something that you've got in your house that no one else has that you can now use to create some some great content um my friend my, my, my friend my son friend that you might have seen floating back and forth you know we, we we've decided to create a tiktok together um over the last few days and that's and that's partly keeping me sane uh, giving me a creative output it's also you know helping me you know put some positive happy energy and, and great memories with with my son while i'm at home um you know so what else can you do you know don't think it's purely about your business is there something else you can do that helps oh, here he is giving everyone a wave hi <laughs> um so yeah and um you know you know as I say, you know, with businesses, you know, is, is there is there unique things you can do? Is there things you can do together with with competitors? And can you can can you bulk together and and create a bigger noise together? Can you lobby together and then lobby the government with with your whole industry? So could could you be the person that leads that? Just now, more than ever, people need leaders, and it's time if you know if you feel that you've got that in you as a brand or a business, to, to stand up and lead. Um, you know. Uh, you know, there's, there, there, you know, there, this is this is the time for that. So hopefully, you, you got something out of my rambling, um, and uh, I'm going to pass you on to Keenan now. So Keenan is going to jump on, and he's got a few more um, bits of advice. Um, I'm going to unmute you, Keenan, if that works. There we go. And then, yeah. um, as I say, we've got time for Q and A at the end. So if you're if you haven't already, um, pop your questions into the Q and A box down at the bottom down here and then we'll, uh, Barbara will start to pull those through once Keenan has finished with his session. So thanks. Cool. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? You guys hear me? Yep, cool, all right. Um, so yeah, I, I just, so, you know, I think there are probably, hopefully, as Andrew was saying, like quite a few nuggets in there um, that you guys can use, um, hopefully kind of stir up some creative ideas uh, for your strategy or, or, or different tactics that you guys can be using right now. Um, but uh, as with a lot of things, there are some some pitfalls um, or, may, you know, maybe just some things that you want to avoid. And Andrew kind of mentioned a couple of those, a uh, couple of them there, but I, I thought I would talk through them as well. Um, or just kind of expand on that uh, just for a minute. So kind of one of the first 
pitfalls and the major one that uh, that we're that I'm seeing out there um, is just kind of businesses kind of capitalizing um, or not not necessarily capitalizing, but um, they're at least they're seen to be capitalizing um, on the situation. Um, and so, you know, they're just it's just kind of a you know. There, there are a lot of people in emotional distress right now and um, there's a lot of worry there's uh people just kind of struggling right now so what things that would have been totally fine um a few weeks ago are now maybe coming across as a bit tone deaf uh, tone deaf um or just unempathetic um so um so some things i've seen um yeah, so the one that I saw on Monday, um, it was actually one of the first things I saw. I woke up and got on Twitter, um, and the first ad I saw was for an insurance, a life insurance company, um, and they were advertising new rates. Um, and it was just, oh man, it, it just came across so uh, like they were just trying to take advantage. Um, all of the comments on the ad were just really, really, really negative. Um, and I just thought, you know, that's. I don't think they're necessarily doing that on purpose. Um, it may be just a, an ad that, that, that's been running for weeks um, and then it's just come up. And then unfortunately, because of all the engagement, Twitter's going, oh, well, we should get them lower CPMs and um, pr promote this ad more. Um, but just really, really negative. Um, you know, as Andrew mentioned, there are there are a couple companies um, with that had trending hashtags on Twitter um, that were, you know, just telling their workers, you know, even, even as, Boris Johnson has said, you know, please don't, you know, everybody should be on lockdown. And um, they're telling people, no, everything, just act normal. Just please come into work like normal um, or just not paying their workers. Um, and so, of course, there's been tons and tons of negativity um, around that. Um, and then, you know, so another one is just like, uh, there have been a few bigger brands, um, Audi, Volkswagen, um, MasterCard, they kind of did a clever thing uh, with their logos where they, they were kind of trying to promote social distancing. Um, and so MasterCard, instead of being the two circles together, they had put them apart like this. Um, and, you know, again, I don't think, I think in a normal, you know, a, a few weeks ago, that sort of thing would have been totally fine. But again, people are just in a lot of distress now. So um, I, I suppose the takeaway there is um, whatever you're going to do, um, you know, as, as far as the, the things that we've been going over, um, just that you're, that what the thing that you're doing, um, you're humanizing your brand, you're helping people in need, you're using your resource um, to help the people around you or the businesses in your sector, you're wanting to lead, whatever, the, 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 that's the centerpiece and that's the thing that gets talked about and your brand is down here, the old mark is down here, um, or maybe it's not on there at all, you know, people just know who you are. Um, it's just a better, it's a safer place to be. Um, and, you know, from a brand perspective is, is probably going to be a lot better for your brand in the long run. So, you know, but so some messages rather than, so, you know, for, for these guys, for these brands, instead of focusing on their logo, you know, maybe it would have been better for, you know, some things that I'm seeing out there that are really, really great. Uh, to kind of focus on, you know, we're still here as a business, we're still going, um, we're here to help you, we're all in this together, stay positive, you know, please be safe. Those are some things that we can focus on right now um, that are all, they're all just really positive messages, um, kind of just lift people up a little bit. Um, another one that I saw that, that was quite popular, there's quite a bit of conversation around um, distilleries, you know, offering hand sanitizer. Um, I've seen a lot of them doing it, doing that in a, like really well, um, but then there, were, there was one that I saw that that it just in my opinion just didn't come off great, um, and it was you know first off they had kind of that this business had kind of failed to mention that they were free, so it kind of looked like they were trying to sell hand sanitizer when there wasn't hand sanitizer available in any of the shops. Um, again, that's I'm not saying they were that they were trying to do this or that they were uh, intentionally trying to. Uh, make themselves look this way, of course not, um, but it just kind of came off uh, that way. Um, so they, you know, the, the way that they did it, again, just to me, the, the, the labels on the bottles and everything, you know, were they trying to be a little bit too clever with their branding and, uh, and, and putting that front and center, you know, to, to me, it probably would have been better just to go we're making hand sanitizer and we just, we just want to help anyone. Um, so, you know, here's where you can pick it up. Um, all right. So, but again, you know, as, I, as I've said before, there's, there's, there's just an awareness, I think, around, 
if you're wanting to do something good, there's, there's the social listening bit, which Andrew talked about, and it's just being aware of what people are saying, um, or, you know, around the current situation and being sensitive to them, um, and just being aware of the, the conversation. Um, and I'll just give a couple examples. Um, I think a few of us will probably be, or a lot of us will be aware of the, the Nike campaign with Colin Kaepernick, um, the one they did in 2018. Um, you know, they, they took a stance. They they understood what their values were. They knew what the Nike knew what its what its purpose was, um, and they they just kind of took a stand on that. Um, and in so doing, you know, a lot of people would argue, well, they they kind of polarized a lot of their customers because all these people that shared the same values went, oh, that's really great. I love Nike even more now. Um, and then you had other people that were burning their shoes um, on Twitter and videos and and, and stuff like that. So. But I, I would say that was overall was a huge success for them. Um, and, and they just did it in, in just the right way. Of course, they mentioned, you know, they, they talked about themselves a little bit, but it was, it was mainly focusing on, on Colin and what, what he was doing and what some of the other athletes were doing. Um, on the other side of that, you had, uh, you have like the, the Live For Now campaign that Pepsi did, um, which was kind of the polar opposite. They kind of just decided we're going to do this really great video um, around these different issues um, and it's just going to be really great. But it came, it, but again, it didn't really, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, I wouldn't say that they, that it came across as overly genuine. Um, so ultimately people kind of turned on them for it. Um, so um, all, all that to say, um, you know, there are a couple things that you can do to kind of guard yourself against falling into any of those or, you know, in order to get away from seeing like you're capitalizing. Um, and then and the first one is just to be completely transparent and authentic. Uh, be real, be human. Um, if you can do a video where it's where it's actually a person talking into a camera um, and just being positive, encouraging people with different messages, talking about what you're doing to help, um, I think that's I think that's right where you want to be. Um, and then, you know, as Andrew mentioned as well, um, something that you can do is just kind of test things with your with your team. Um, so, you know, do you get two or three people together and go, okay, what are three ideas? Let's get creative together, just some some quick scamps, you know, um, and then do you show those to different members in your team and go, okay, you, this just came up on your Facebook feed or LinkedIn or whatever it is. Um, how does that make you feel? Um, and we all have, you know, I can think of a few people that made brave. I just go, they're always going to give me an honest answer, right? Um, so you go, you go show it to that person um, and just get an honest answer out of them um, rather than putting it up. Because it's always, you know, in all of these examples, um, they were all, a lot of them were like, were good ideas. Um, but it, it would have just taken a, a small tweak to make it really, really positive, but they sort of missed the mark. Um, so I, I do wonder if they just had, had gotten some feedback um, or gotten the right feedback at the right time. Um, it could have gone over really, really well. Um, and then, so there's one other pitfall that I just wanted to talk about, um, and it's just around isolating. Um, so, you know, isolating, hiding, uh, turning off your social media and your channels, um, it's kind of a fear-based reaction um, and it's totally understandable. Um, if I'm totally honest, that's, that's kind of where I wanted to go. I'm just like, oh boy, this is, uh, I don't really know where, what to do with this, where to go. Um, and I think there's quite a bit of, uh, there are quite a few people like me um, who are looking for, looking for leadership. Um, so again, as Andrew mentioned, like, can you be that not only within your business, um, but within your sector as well, and, and just kind of have a, you know, here we go, this is the thing that we're gonna do, here's how we're gonna help, here's how we're gonna band together. Um, but, so anyway, so that it's kind of a fear-based reaction if, you, if you're isolating, if you're not talking on social. Um, but, uh, you know, the problem with that, of course, is that, you know, um, if you kind of disappear for a few days or a few weeks, you know, are, are people going to start assuming things that, you know, has your business gone under or have you guys gone to a skeleton crew and you're not, you know, are you just not around anymore? Um, and, but there are all just all kinds of negative things that can go along with that. Um, so it just, if we can, if you can do everything that you can, even if it's just, even if it's just with stories and you're just putting stuff out there to, to show that you're, that you're still around, that you're, you're still pushing, um, 
it, it can just be a really positive thing um, for people. And it means that when things start to improve, um, then you're, you're kind of right there where you should be uh, versus, you know, if you can imagine um, if you're kind of hanging back, not posting, but your competitors have been, um, then they kind of have the jump um, when, when things start to improve um, uh, for that. So, um, okay, well, that's, that's, all the, that's all that I had really. Um, my bit was a bit shorter there, um, but I thought we could, um, I thought we could probably answer a few questions. Um, thanks to everybody for, for uh, sending those over. I think as Andrew mentioned, you can, um, you can put your own questions in there, but you can also upvote them. Um, I think we'll probably yeah. get to most of these, but, but just in case. Yeah, Barbara, um, do you want to pick one out for us? Uh, yeah, we'll just start at the top with the most upvoted one, if you guys are happy with that. Um, yeah. I've no, uh, Annabelle Beckwith, uh, Beckwith sorry, would like to know, I've never heard of social listening tools. Can you name a couple so I can go and look them up, please? Oh yeah, um, so there, there are tons of them. Um, there's one that I've been using for a while, which is really easy to use. It's called Mention. Um, and Mention will, you know, basically you're just gonna go in there and do, um, you're gonna set up all your operators um, and they're, you know, um, you can kind of set it up like a Google search in a way, um, but it'll pull results from, um, from Google. It'll pull results from blogs all your social channels, all that kind of stuff. And if you plug in like Twitter and Instagram and all, uh, all of your channels, you can also respond to people through, uh, through it. So that, that's really nice. And that's kind of like a, a middle of the road, kind of just getting started um, kind of platform. If you needed something bigger, more robust, um, there's one called Meltwater. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but you know, of course you can, you can handle a lot more with it. Um, yeah, it, it's quite, it's quite a bit more expensive meltwater. It's much more of a kind of yeah. enterprise solution, but there's, there's a lot of free solutions out there as well. So you can, you could just set up Google, um, Google, Google alerts. Um, so Google alerts is completely free. And uh, you know, if your brand has been mentioned anywhere online, so, you know, I, I have an alert set up for made brave or for my name. And if, you know, so if I'm mentioned in any article or anything, it pings into my inbox every single day and shows me everything. So, so I'm not having to hunt for things. It all comes to me. Um, Keenan, you're a big, uh, um, you, you, you've got a lot of knowledge on the Twitter sort of advanced search as well. And it's quite yeah. a lot of, you know, maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's, uh, so that's another one. Um, a lot of the tools are, are missing some of the operators that you can use within Twitter search. Um, so go, go look that up. If, if you go and Google it, it'll show, you know, here's what a minus scene sign means. Here's what I hear quotes and all that kind of stuff. Um, or if you want to keep an eye on certain channels um, or, or different locations, different times, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with it. Um, so I, you know, for Made Brave, I have one, I have an account set up with Mention, um, and then I, and then we've got a, a Meltwater one as well. Um, and then I've also got uh, just a, just a native Twitter search feed, and you can just, you can bookmark that link and just go in there every day and see who's talking about, uh, who's talking about you. So, um, yeah. So yeah. And, the, and the good thing with Meltwater and some of these social listening tools, they'll, they'll give you all sorts of things in terms of brand sentiment. So they'll, they'll let you know if people are talking positively or negatively about your brand. They'll also often flag up if there's kind of like a neutral conversation and then you can kind of mark that. You, you can decide um, whether you think that's positive or negative and, and, and you can set as many different kind of, you know, kind of try and understand what's, what's best suited to your brand or, or the conversations that you're trying to track. Yeah. Um, okay, the next question, uh, go for it, Barbara. Next question um, is with regards to motivating the teams. Any team, any tips on, sorry, it's from Sarah Heaney. Any tips on Hi, keeping the full team motivated and continue to work as a team together while everyone is distancing? Yeah, that, I mean, I, I think that can be a challenge for people. I mean, we've got just under 50 people and they've all gone completely remote. And, um, you know, obviously, first of all, you, you need to have the right tools in place um, to communicate. I, I believe that just now, the don't worry about over communicating and over communicating is good. You've got to remember that every every member of your team is in a different situation. Some people might be um, isolated on their own. Some people might have a bigger family. You know, some people might have their partners or loved ones that have just lost their jobs. So, you know, what I've kind of, with our team, we're using a, a multiple of tools. So we've got like um, Google Docs and all the Google tools. So um, uh, they we're kind of working for 
kind of Google Hangouts, etc. We've also got Slack. Slack's a really good platform to kind of have multiple conversations going on at once. Um, and then obviously you've got tools like Zoom like we're using today. But I suppose kind of practically um, what we are doing at Made Brave is that every morning we're doing a, an all hand all hands session every single day um, at half past 10. Now, usually we would do an all hands once a month, you know, um, where, where I kind of, I suppose I give an update on the business and where we're going and, you know, sort of capturing all the information. But at the moment we're doing it at half past 10 every day because I believe we need to, we need to keep everyone's mindset together. Um, and what we have is on Slack, we have a manager's um, channel where all of my leaders and the team are kind of inputting information to me. And I'm then using that to try and sort of figure out what a sort of generalized narrative of what's happening in the business and making sure everyone's up to date with that so they all feel included. Um, we've, we've, we've done a few nice little things. Um, we've one of our team members that, that um, at Made Brave usually does like a yoga session in, in the studio and does some mindfulness. They've continued to do that. So we're, we're running those sessions um, over Google Hangouts. We've got everyone joining in. We've also got a virtual uh, water cooler so we've set up a google hangout that is always open so you can always go in and if you just if you're sitting you're having a coffee or you're feeling a bit lonely you can jump into the water cooler as if you've got you know almost like a, a real water cooler and there's hopefully always going to be someone there that's also looking for a conversation at that time so yeah i think just keeping the communication up um trying not to forget about having fun um you know in some of our slack channels we've discussed could we get a made brave band together can we kind of start playing uh you know and do stuff and so you know try and also encourage your team members to, to take time off it can feel like in this moment that you need everyone there doing 100 miles an hour but that can also have an adverse effect in terms of you know you don't want people to burn out you don't want to you know you don't want to have that feeling like you don't stop um, so, so making sure people feel safe to do that. And also, you know, I, I said to my team, you know, let's open up a line of communication that, you know, if you feel if something's happened in your family, someone's taken ill or someone has now lost their job or you're struggling for money, let me know. You know, I think as a, a leader of a business, you, you have to understand everyone's situations to understand how to kind of, I suppose, look after them correctly. So, so, so making sure that line of information is open, that everyone feels like they have trust, that, that, um, that they're not scared to come and tell when things are going wrong. And, and then, you know, also just be transparent about how you're dealing with this as a business. You know, I, I can imagine if, if, if I mean, the shoe was on the other foot and, you know, uh, I was looking to someone to, to tell me what was happening. If I, if I didn't get the information, you know, you start to make the information up in your head. So, so give as much and, and, and uh, you know, every bit of information that you can, um, you know, and, and try and let people. I, I've always found that if you share that trust and you share the, um, the kind of worries and fears that you have, that, you know, amazingly the people in the team start coming up with ideas to fix them for you so don't always um if you're feeling pressured that you run a business and you're on your own don't feel like it's only down to you that's why you have a team excellent thank cool. you andrew keenan is do you, do you want to add, add anything on to that keenan Keen, has keenan frozen, frozen. <laughs> keenan's frozen oh no um, one thing we do at Made Brave as well is we have a free time chat where if people have some free time that they can volunteer so it doesn't seem like you don't have anything to do because that can be really um, isolating as well. So if you continually just keep the communication open, it's been really helpful, I've seen as well. Okay, next Great. question. So I, th I think from... Keenan has internet has gone, so we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, hopefully join me <laughs> back in a second. Um, the next question is from Duncan at Rocks. Hello, Duncan. Um, how will we know when it's appropriate to start selling again whilst retaining empathy for the situation we are currently in? Hi, Duncan. Um, yeah, it's a challenging one. And I'm, I don't know if I'm sure of the answer yet. Um, I, I think um, I don't necessarily think it's about turning off everything. I, I think it's about trying to find the balance between both things. And so, you know, so I, maybe my point came across earlier um, wrong is that I don't think you need to completely stop selling, you know, um, that was maybe sort of too harsh on that, that, that way. I think people understand that we all have to make a living. Um, but I think if you're only doing selling, then it comes across as, you know, people don't understand the wider context. They don't understand the situation. Whereas, you know, if, if, if you've had a sort of narrative building and you've been explaining to people, um, you know, the challenges that you're facing and, you know, the team that you have and how they're, you know, and, and then you're talking about that as part of it, then I, I don't feel like it'll be 
it will feel like a, a sell. So, so yeah. So I think it's, it's it's just try and be conscious. Try and you know I always kind of say like if you can step out your own body and kind of look at yourself and the kind of you know the, the, the stuff that's coming out. You know, try and imagine what other people are going to see um, and. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be doing. We'll be doing more of these sessions. So maybe as my sort of thinking on this progresses, um, you know, I'll share some more thoughts on that because it's an interesting point. So um, obviously, Duncan, uh, you can give me a, a phone or, or a message offline, and we can uh, have a chat through it as well. So, um, but for anyone else, I'll, I'll you know I'll think through that a little bit more. Keenan, we were just um, talking about there when is it appropriate to start selling again? Um, you know, mm. you know, and, and I was kind of saying it's, it's it's maybe not that we don't have to completely stop but it's just the the understanding and the balance of both but maybe you've got a, a better insight or answer to that oh man it's such a it's such a tough one um hopefully i don't contradict what you just said um <laughs> <laughs> this is a test um, now <laughs> yeah um no but i i mean it's it, of course it's gonna be different for every business and um but i mean it's it's such an emotional thing i think um it's such a subjective thing um, geez, it's such a such a tough question to answer. I, I was kind of mentioning Keenan that I think it's it's like if you've if you've had that ongoing narrative and you've let people understand the situation that you're in and the context, then you know you know if you have to sell but to you know to to keep your business running or your team you know with food yeah. and, you know you know then it, yeah, it's not much a surprise. It's I think it's if if you don't have that narrative happening and everyone just sees well you know they just they continue sell you know they don't yeah. know they don't know anything further so yeah i think that makes sense yeah yeah definitely cool next question Barbara. fantastic i'm actually going to scroll down the list a little bit because <clears throat> okay. there's a question um here from hannah saying she's just recently joined her company um when they moved to working from home and she is their first marketing hire. She was meant to be establishing the brand and employer oh. identity, but only had three weeks to get settled in before this all happened. Can you suggest how to work on these branding fundamentals when we're working remotely and with the business owners obviously busy fighting fires right now? I want to help keep us moving forward, but during this time, it's difficult. Thank you. So yeah, any thoughts a... on how to tackle any unique ideas and how to tackle that um yeah so it's a oh, well i was i was just gonna say um you know Hannah, i'm not sure um how much knowledge you have in in branding and um but you know there are definitely some some of the resources that andrew mentioned there at the start um you know starting with i think you mentioned starting with why um and the brand gap and some some of those um especially the brand gap is just so so good um at kind of defining a lot of the terms that get thrown around and just kind of bringing them down to earth so that they're easy to understand um you know i think andrew would say you know it, it kind of and what we say at made brave is that everything kind of starts with your purpose and then you build out values from there and then everything you know everything kind of is built off of that um so it's a really great place to start it's 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 really tough with you know if if uh if you're saying uh that the business owners aren't you know it's it's difficult to reach them because normally um, that purpose, not that it doesn't also come from the people within the business, but a, a lot of times that purpose uh, comes from the person who's kind of on top. They're the ones that, that really need to kind of maybe not lead that, but really help define that because they're the ones that need to say, well, this is the reason that I started this business. You know, um, this is the thing. These are the sort of things that I want to inspire. Um, and so, but I, but I think if, you know, I don't know if that's a helpful answer, but those are a couple a couple of resources that I would recommend just to help you, you know, get you started. Um, and at least, you know, maybe then when you do get some time, you've got some questions that you can ask um, that, that can kind of help you. Yeah, and I, th I think your uh, your challenge isn't, isn't unique. I've I've spoke to quite a few people that have maybe just been onboarded to a business the the last few days, and they you know they've they've not actually met their team in person yet. They're they're uh, remote, and, and you know it's challenging for you, Hannah. So you know um you know but I think you know like Keenan says, establishing purpose. I mean, even without what's happening in the world, that's always the way that we would say branding is 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 correct. So kind of um you know usually brands that do things well they don't often talk about the products or services that they have and um you know i'm just going to use nike because it was in front of mine because keenan spoke about nike earlier on but you know nike 
often they don't they don't talk about the trainers. They, in fact, they hardly ever talk about the trainers. They talk about generally what the trainers, what you can do in those trainers. Like you can be the fastest, you can run the fastest you've ever run. You can climb the biggest mountain. You can be the best version of you. So you know, always you know, don't try and think about the product or service and try and push that. You know, and and obviously not knowing what kind of business you're in, it's, it's kind of hard to to give you a, a relatable answer. But you know, try and figure out well you know, what is something bigger than those? And, and, and what we generally say is that if, if it's authentic, if it's true, if it's real, then people figure out what you, what you do and they will buy it. So, you know, find that different thing. And, and, and that's just good sense for, for, for any brand. You know, you know if, if, if you're listening to this a year from now, that would, that would be the same advice that I would give you. So uh, hopefully that helps in some way. Um, if you want to reach out after Hannah, you know, I'm happy to take a call and kind of chat through, um, you know, some help once I, if I can get a little bit more of an understanding of the type of business and, you know, if I can help you in any way, I will. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So the next one is we're going to go back up to the top. Um, like most free, uh, this is from Craig Gillespie. Sorry. Like <laughs> Like most freelancers, I'm thinking of learning some new skills with my extra time, web design, motion design, for example. But I'm thinking as freelancers, we could outsource more jobs and all help each other. Do you think this could be an interesting way of spreading what work is out there and when we get back to normality in the coming months? Uh, sorry, I'm just, yeah, okay. So, see how we can outsource jobs. Sorry, I... I when I dropped off, I can't see any of the questions. Now. I know, and I was I was trying to find the question and it disappeared. So right, so the, like most freelancers, I'm thinking of learning some new skills with my extra time, web design, motion. But I'm actually thinking as freelancers, we could outsource more jobs to help each other. Yeah, I, I definitely think you know you use this as a time to build a network, build um, relationships with people. Um, you know, I think it's you know if 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 you've got if you're financially stable and you know people in your network that are not, and you know they need some support, you know. You know, I think it's a good time as a human being to, to, to help those around you. Um, I think if I was freelance right now, and, and I've been freelance in the past, you know, before I, I, I ran a business, um, yeah, I would, I would be trying to, to figure out how to build myself into a community, how to sort of create a bigger um, support um, network around me. Um, and, you know, and, 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 you know, what you could be thinking to do is if you've got some time um, and you have like physical or practical skills that you can give, say graphic design or motion graphics, is, is do those for people that, that would benefit from that right now. And, and, and if you can do it for no fee, you know, you know, you know, do that for them in the hope that, um, you know, you know, if, if there's a charity out there that needs some help just now, um, if you could, if you could spend an hour of your time and help them, what might likely happen is in a couple of months, well, they're going to phone you back and say, thank you so much for that. You know, we'd, we'd like to hire you. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely help each other out. Um, you know, support each other. I think it's, it's really important just now to support uh, each other and those around you. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Um, and I think we've got time for one last question, guys. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay, here's one going anyway, back okay. to talking about pulling social media. Um, Jeremy Warner says, we are planning, uh, we are putting plans in place to pull our social content for the time and going back uh, and going quiet in order to hunker down and plan for the comeback. Wrong approach? Um, I mean, I, I suppose it just, you know, again, kind of depends on your, your business, um, Jeremy, and the sort of content that was going out. Um, so Jeremy I mean, is power of life, Keenan. Uh, oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, I, 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 don't think, I don't think you need to pull anything down. Um, or, you know, if you're talking about deleting posts, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, if you're talking about, you know, running ads, uh, it's maybe just, you know, kind of what I was saying earlier, what I was hoping to communicate was just like, it doesn't mean that you don't run any advertising, um, but it just means that maybe you adapt your message a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's it's kind of a tricky one um, to be selling power banks right now, as, as Andrew mentioned. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know if you could, I don't know if you yourself, uh, Jeremy, could talk a little bit about, um, you know, way, ways that you guys are helping. Um, again, just to kind of, um, just so that brand isn't front and center, um, but you can still kind of humanize a little bit. Um, I don't know. That's a really tough one, but you know, like I was saying earlier, probably don't want to go totally dark um, because we, you know, you don't want people to forget about you. Um, yeah. you don't want and I think Jeremy, with, there. 
with your content, um, you know, uh, for anyone that's not seen Jeremy, his brand is Power of Life. And, you, you know, Jeremy, you, you, you run a vlog series that's really inspiring and, it, and, 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 you know, purpose is really at the core of your business. So, you know, for me, you know, I actually enjoy seeing the Jeremy Warner vlog coming up on my screen and it gives a little bit of brightness into my day. So, you, mm. you know, if, if, if everyone turns that stuff off, it's going to be a very dark place. So, you know, just, 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 you know, as Keenan says, just think about the content and remember, like, you know, try and put out that positivity, try and keep, you know, inspiring people to make change. And, you know, by, by doing that, we can have a ripple effect that's beyond ourselves. And, you know, um, I, I believe that, you know, it, if we can get as many value driven entrepreneurs and people that actually want to help others doing the right thing right now, then that ripples huge. You know, the UN, um, United Nations, um, just created a document that's a call to arms for all creatives. And they outlined, you know, there's five or six pages in it. If you search online, you, um, uh, Barbara might be able to find it right now and pop it in the comments. Um, but it's a, a sort of creative brief um, for, for everyone and they've got a ton of messages that they want to get out in the world and they feel if if we get more positive messaging around these key themes well then it helps to to, to you know shorten the, the time that we're all in this you know pandemic and this situation and so 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 I, I, yeah I don't think it's time to turn off I think it's just time to, to make sure that you've got the right messaging that supports the greater good of, of everyone really. So the document that I've just shared in the chat, everyone, is actually the brief, the UN brief that Andrew's just mentioned. Yeah, so that, that, that brief is just, they're, they're basically asking anyone that's got time or creative skill set or, you know, um, is to put that out. And, and, and I think an important, important thing I'm just going to mention, actually, is that I said a lot today, like, you, you know, come on and, you know, find your voice and talk and be, you know, and that's really, really intimidating and scary. I mean, it took me years to, you know, be able to talk on screen and online. Um, you know, everyone's got a different voice and a different way to do it. You know, your way might be drawing a cartoon. Your way might be creating a meme. Your way might be writing a blog. Your way might be a video. So don't feel that you have to come and do video. You don't have to do webinars. Yeah. Find the thing that's right for you. Um, and, and, and if you still don't feel that you can do that, well, can you support someone else and let them do it and empower them more and build them up more? Um, you know, uh, I, I don't mean to make it sound like it's easy to do because it, it's definitely not. And, you know, it took me a lot of sort of confidence and, and confidence building to be able to kind of put your voice out. Definitely. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, this one is from, it's going back to morale. Um, does anyone have any additional fun content ideas for internal comms? It was Amy that asked that question. If you want to touch on any of that. Um, I, I think the snap camera has been really fun for us. Um, it just kind of, cause you just need, do need like a little smile sometimes. So it's just nice to see everybody's, everybody laughing together. Um, I can't emphasize enough. Um, I, before I was at Made Brave, um, I was, I was freelance myself for about three years and that was just... <laughs> See what I mean? Um, so, um, but I, I, I can't stress that enough. Like just keeping the positivity there, keeping that human connection, looking somebody in the eyes and hearing their voice. And there's just nothing more important. So at least doing that in the morning, but doing it through the day uh, really keeps morale up. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of content out there. Uh, people doing free uh, like meditation, positive thinking, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my little, I have a seven-year-old little girl. She was doing like ballet, some like famous ballet person in London. Um, there, and there's just all this free content that's out there. Um, so just really, I, I would say, you know, probably just really encouraging your team to, to latch onto that. Maybe, you know, do you assign somebody like you're in charge of positivity um, and just making sure that people have, you know, they're being sent stuff that they can go do, things that they can participate in. Um, just because it is so, so easy when you're, when you're working, especially, you know, I, I live here with my family, but if I, you know, if I was all by myself, um, that could be, uh, that would definitely be a lot harder. Um, so it's just, it, yeah, it, it really is an important thing. That's a great point, Keenan, to put in there the, you know, assign someone to positivity, like make someone the champion. Um, Made Brave usually in our normal studio, we have, we give someone the role of director of fun. So they, they usually, you know, when we're all in the studio together, they'll have a budget. So if, if they feel like there needs to be some fun created or things, they, they can use that. They can use it to negotiate with people and try and, you know, they can decide that they want to go and buy a hundred ice creams for everyone or, you know, whatever they want to do. So, like, you know, that idea is quite nice and like, you know, right. Okay. Barbara, this week, you're director of fun. Next week it's you, Keenan. And, you know, and, you know, then, then, you know, 
we've got um, also people at Made Brave that usually, again, in the physical world, they'll, they'll, they'll run a camera club, um, they'll put pub quizzes and things. And, and most of these things you can take online as well now. So, so think about uh, what stuff you can do for your team. But then also when you're doing that, if you're doing a camera club, right, and uh, you're doing it for your team, and can you think, well, would, would the wider freelance uh, community benefit from that or the wider creative mm-hmm. community? And think, can you turn that, now something you always did inwardly and put it outwardly for your brand um, and give it to your wider tribe you know um, you know you kind of want to you want to keep them inclusive and show them that you're, you're thinking about them as well so fantastic thank you yep. um okie dokie the next one is from shannon fleming um hi shannon she says, I'd love more businesses to see the value and understand how important it is for it to communicate properly. But how do I suggest, how do you suggest I encourage them to seek help without seeming like I'm profiteering? She is a communications freelancer and wordsmith. Um, I think that, 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 that is maybe um, slightly easier. Well, not easier, right? It's not an easy chance, right? But, you know, as a writer, not everyone's good at writing. And so I often have uh, writer, uh, writers that help me. Um, you know, I often know what I want to say and my mind works very visually and, you know, I, I'm good at coming up with ideas. I can understand what I'm trying to do. I'm often not great at putting that into words. And so there'll be a lot of people in that situation. And, and so I suppose, you know, the more conversations you have with people and you, the more you understand the challenges that they're facing, the more opportunity that potentially might bring for you. So, you know, if you're, if you're talking to people like, you know, you could be talking about, you know, you know, this is an important time to communicate. And if you can get to that point where you understand, well, that person's not comfortable doing it, well, potentially you could, you could ask them what they want to say and you could write it up for them. Um, and that's really going to support them and obviously give you some work as well. So, um, you know, I suppose trying to spark that, I mean, maybe that's something you put out on social media, you could put out at the moment. Look, I know everyone, you know, everyone's having a challenging time and you all need to communicate or talk from your brand and, it's, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but that's where that's where you come in. That's where I come in, Shannon. You know, I, I can help get your thoughts and put them down on paper for you to, so that you have something to share because then you've just solved someone's issue. You know, you, you might have found, there might be someone out there that's dyslexic, dyslexic. Um, that, that, that is not good with grammar. And now you've just, you've just, you've just been the solution to help them do what they want to do. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, maybe another thing that you could do um, is just kind of, I know Andrew was kind of saying, you know, everybody's doing content right now, um, especially all the businesses that maybe weren't putting out as much social before. Um, There's just so much that's out there. But, you know, is there a way that you can kind of highlight some brands that are doing community comms really well? Um, And maybe some, you know, not that you trash talk anybody, but, you know, here are the 10 things to think about in creating blog posts, creating videos. Andrew said, you know, like Andrew said, like, doing it your own way um but just thinking of ways to to showcase your expertise in that way um i i don't think is salesy um you know it's just something that people need right now um yeah i mean i I put a post out the other day of, of look here's here's four or five things that I've noticed that businesses are doing positively and creatively, you know, to create solutions and innovate here. And it was just it was literally, you know, four bullet points on LinkedIn. You could probably look back in my feed and, and find it. Um, and I said to anyone, look, I'd love to know any more ideas that you've got pop them in the feed. And that feed got really full. And then um, like two days later, someone had written an article in the newspaper and they had quoted me and quoted all the, all the, all the, all the things that were in that feed. So, you know, you, just by putting that little thing out there, you, you should never know where that's going to end up. And that, you know, that might end up bringing that customer to you or, or, or someone that, you, you know, you're going to be able to help. Excellent. Thank you. Um, do we have time for more? One more? Let's, yeah, I think let's do this the last one, conscious of everyone's time, um, you know, so pick, pick a good one. But... Oh, pick a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, okay, here's one from Alistair Booth. Um, we've now supported most of our clients in how to achieve savings um, through temporary layoffs. We've also shared our approach with local accountants and other partners such as Business Gateway. We've done all this for free. It's not something we've really shouted about but should we be saying things on social media um yeah i mean i I don't don't think there's anything wrong with talking about it um you know if, if, if that's not in a public place right now um i think you know just talking about the context of of why you did it um and making sure that 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 messaging is there that 
you know, you really did want to help people and you really did want to help businesses. And that's, that was kind of your motivation. Um, I think having that context in place is, re is really critical. Um, mm -hmm. but, but no, I don't think as long as you do it in the right way, um, which again, we've said over and over is quite tricky. Um, I, I don't think that would be a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, I think if it's truly coming from the heart and it's authentic, then generally what I'll find is that if you do something good, that they'll talk about it. And I suppose that's the ideal place you want to be in where other people are, 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 are saying what you did, um, rather than having to, you know, to say it yourself, but you know, yeah, I think if the intention is there, it's correct. Then, you know, you know, you need to figure out your narrative right now. And, and if you don't have a narrative, well, you know, no one's going to listen, you know, to, to, to your part in this. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's a tricky thing. It's, um, you know, I, I think for me, um, and for made brave, it's, it's trying to think like, you know, um, ho hopefully we get more business in the next few weeks, in the next few months. Um, but whenever we put something out, especially right now, you know, am I th trying, I'm trying to think like, are we genuinely doing this for the reasons that we're saying that we're doing it? Do we really want to help people? And is that the way that it's coming across? Um, mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't, you know, if, if I'm being honest with myself and going, well, no, we're just trying to get more people on a website or get people to fill out a form, you know, something like that. Um, I don't know, maybe just being honest with yourself a little bit and, and making sure that motivation is, is right where it should be. Fantastic. Thank you. So thanks, thanks basically everyone for coming on today. We're, we do plan now to run more of these sessions. Um, we'd like to make them as valuable and as useful to you as possible. So, uh, you know, if you want to feed back to us and let us know what kind of topics would be useful, if there's things that are, you know, puzzling you and you're maybe even too scared to pop them on here, you can drop me a direct message. You can drop Keenan a direct message or Barbara. Um, I also have a post on LinkedIn that I think I posted last night that asked for topics. Um, and again, that's, you know, based on the principle we talked about earlier on is try and do things that people actually need right now rather than what you think they need. Um, so, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we really appreciate you take, appreciate, easy for me to say, appreciate <laughs> you taking the time out of the day to join us. Um, we're going to be running more of these. We're also running some with the creative industries support group um, that we have set up for the creative industries. Uh, I believe I have one on Tuesday. Is that correct, Barbara? <laughs> Barbara knows me better. Isn't it? Yes, it is. You Tuesday, have one on um, Tuesday. Yeah, I think I'm doing a, a chat with Mark Logan from Skyscanner. He was one of the founders of Skyscanner. And we were correct. Talking, we're going to talk a little bit about business resilience in a time like this. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to create some more for Made Brave at least one a week we, we'll see how the you know how, how much interest um people have and what the need is there but um yep. at least one a week will be definitely be happening um yeah thanks a lot and i hope you guys have uh, an okay rest of the day thanks guys thanks thank you everyone much. for coming see you on the next one bye